going? Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? I'm so caught off guard. <laughs> Are you ready? Are no, you I'm ready? so ready. No, He's I'm ready. definitely ready. I'm Phil Chambers. This is Gareth Morgan. And on today's news, we have... We have Matt Hardy is announcing a new version of himself coming soon. Did Cody Rhodes get injured in his cage match on AEW Dynamite? Jeff Cobb has been offered an AEW contract with a twist. Ooh, the secret messages happening in SmackDown. Who was responsible for the top matches in AEW Dynamite's episode last week? William Regal's son. Entering the New Japan Dojo is exciting. Um, some people have been announced for the Hall of Fame. New people. New people. But New people. First, big news on the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view on SmackDown. Uh, there was a sit-down interview with Lacey Evans and Renee Young, mm. where Lacey Evans was talking about nasties and other things that the she nasty. likes to talk about. Uh, but she was saying that because she lost to, to Bailey on last week's episode of SmackDown, she is now at the bottom of the queue for the Women's Championship. And so in order to get back to that match at WrestleMania, she's going to have to go through five other people at... Elimination Chamber. Right. So, this means there could be two women's Elimination Chamber matches on the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Obviously, Raw one has already been announced. Who's in that one? We've got... We have. Shana. Can you name them all? We've got Shayna Baszler. Yes. Natalia. Yes. Uh, Sarah Logan. Yes. Uh, I want to say, I was going to say Lana, but it's not Lana, is it? It is not Lana, the uh, other one in that story. It's, I've, I've forgot her name, Liv Morgan. Liv, yep. Um, and then who else she got on Raw? I'm trying to think now. Women's Tag Team Champion. Oh, Asuka. Yep. And, and finally, just returned a couple of weeks ago, kicked Liv Morgan, used to team with Liv Morgan. Oh, uh, Ruby Riot. There we so, go. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I know them all. <laughs> no. so that's obviously the ball match, and then the SmackDown match, I guess, would be Lacey Evans and five others. But a bit weird that they're gonna have two women's Elimination Chambers matches on the same pay-per-view, mm. but also on SmackDown. Uh, Sheamus was doing one of his backstage, down a corridor, dark, whatever promos that he was doing, saying that he's already gone through the two rats in uh, Shorty G and the Apollo rats. Crews. The rats. Yeah. And now he's going to get rid of all of the other rats on SmackDown in the world's biggest rat cage, which is the Elimination Chamber. So that's three matches, three Elimination Chamber matches on the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. I'd be surprised, but I was. I, I, we, we're living in an age where we had three Hell in a Cell matches on the same card. This is true. So, so I, never I'm, say never. It's with one of them. I think there's, it's only a matter of time before we have like three Royal Rumble matches on the same night, like stuff like yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's just. It's gonna kind of kill off the chamber. It just will. It's the law of diminishing yeah. returns. But I don't know. More, more chamber, more money. Yeah. As long as they can <laughs> keep them all different, I guess. Yeah. Somehow. They're yeah. normally not too bad at making like two matches seem different. Like, yeah. Three. Unless it's a tag team match, that always tends to. Have. We've got a men's yeah. women's tag team. It keeps it a bit fresh. But it seems like three singles ones. Yeah. Who knows? The rat elimination chamber. Yeah. Obviously, we'll find out more after Super Showdown is out of the way because that's getting in the way of all of the road yep. to WrestleMania. But it's the yeah. roadblock. Remember that? We shall see. Yeah. Okay. So next story, because I have a story. I've got a story to tell you. <laughs> Uh, Matt Hardy has released another one of his great videos on YouTube after he he was, well, completely brutalized again on Raw. Um, that match just didn't happen, did it? Like the no, hold, no holds barred match, it was scheduled, but he was too broken from the week before and it, it just got absolutely battered by Orton instead. But in this video, there's a lot to kind of like take apart in this video, but yep. <laughs> I'm just gonna, gonna give you a bit of an extract. Um, my, my favorite extract from it. Um, Goes on a massive, incredible Hardy rant as he always does, like I'm doing now. And he goes, Yes, brother Keith, killer of legends, yes. Oddly enough, I will say thank you because without your violent assassination, yes, my transformation could have been couldn't have been complete. Sorry. We had to bury we had to witness the burial of the Hardy Boys vision of Matt Hardy. But as I sit here in my beloved chair of wheels on the magical Hardy compound, yes, we are now only a matter of days from the rebirth, the reincarnation, the resurrection of my essence. We're only a few days away from the second coming of the new and omnipotent version of Matt Hardy. What does this mean, You can as an actor, can't you, eh? I know, it's my time to share, man. It's my time, it's my time. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think this means? Are we new Matt see? Hardy coming, I mean, What obviously. is it going to be? Who the hell knows with Matt Hardy? It could be absolutely anything. He could just be dipping seeds to, to go anywhere. Like, he's just that kind of guy. He just 
He just lays out the seeds and he just lets everyone else figure it out and then he just does kind of whatever he wants at the end of it. We have an inkling, we have a little inkling. He has put on Twitter, he, he, I think he replied, yes, free the delete, when um, somebody posted a picture of a sign that said free the delete in AEW. Mm -hmm. um, he's had another uh, few decent little tweets because we just love Matt Hardy's tw tweets. He is amazing. very good on Twitter. Um, he put, uh, his, somebody asked him who was his favourite on SmackDown, his favourite star on SmackDown right now, and he said, without a doubt, Bray Wyatt. Another kind of Makes sense. helping out his old pal. Um, and then I think he was just kind of asked to, like, on the scene right now, in terms of the rest of the scene as a whole, he quite enjoyed it. And he said, uh, RVD from Impact. So clearly he doesn't really care RVD's about... He's definitely doing all right. <laughs> yeah, he's doing really well. We just saw a picture uh, didn't we, of him doing yeah, very well. Yeah, go to RVD's Twitter. Well. I don't think we can put the picture on the news. <laughs> I don't think YouTube will allow that. Oh, RVD's But yeah, great. just go check out RVD's Twitter. He's, Charlie Sheen of He's wrestling. a ridiculous man. <laughs> okay, what else we got? <laughs> <Next> up, <laughs> uh, obviously, last week on AW Dynamite, there was a big cage match between Cody and Wardlow, and Cody did the ridiculous moonsault from the so top of the cage. He, but he did that really... Sorry, I just, I've not had a chance to speak, to speak about this. He did that so quickly. He, he literally did, got up he and went... Like, <laughs> he just got there and just went... Like, he didn't like, give anyone a chance to catch up or like figure out what he's doing. Yeah, he said, ah, screw yeah. this, off like, we go. Slipped! <laughs> um, well, it turns out he has been injured on that, but I don't think it's too bad of an injury. Uh, Cody put out on Instagram, a long way down, small fracture in my big toe, but I'm on a treatment plan with a uh, doctor and cleared for action. And then he put a picture with circling like the exact moment when he sort of landed and it was just he kind of landed toe first onto the mat. So I guess that's... I'll do that. I was about uh, to mock that, but when you do break, if anyone's broken a toe, it sucks. Yeah. It really sucks. Uh, and AEW confirmed it on Twitter as well, saying, as first reported by Cody Rhodes on his Instagram account and confirmed by Doc Sampson, uh, due to Cody's foot hitting the mat after landing the moonsault, he has a non-displaced fracture of distal phalanx R great toe. His status cleared for action as tolerated. Right, so he's broken his toe. And then MJF yeah. <laughs> uh, retweeted that just with the eyes emoji. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's done well to come out of that and only break his yeah, toe, and to be fair. Not I bad. He um, broke his arm the way he landed. I guess this just means they'll take it easy for a few weeks leading into Revolution with the match on and with MJF, but that match is definitely still going ahead. So get well, Cody. And yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, it was. that's one of my favourite spots. Kind of right for jumping off stupid things. So quickly, prep yourself <laughs> next time, man. Prep your landing. Um, next piece of uh, news, we've got another bit of AEW news. Jeff Cobb, um, Jeff, I didn't say Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb. Why is that hard to say? It's no just idea. the Saturday morning. Trained actor. It's all going downhill from here, boys. Okay. Um, so, um, he's apparently been offered an AEW contract uh, after his debut. He had his debut against John Moxley. Obviously, he lost because, yep, yeah, John Moxley. Um, but, yeah, this, this contract apparently will still allow him to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Interesting. Which is something that a lot of AEW stars have in their contracts already. Jericho, John Moxley. Uh, I'm not sure if the Young Bucks, they could note it down. Mm. Yeah, the Young Bucks apparently already ha have it in there as well, and Kenny Omega. Um, so they've all kind of worked that into their contracts. Um, it makes sense, I guess. It gives him that more widespread, uh, widespread acclaim. Like, he can kind of go and do whatever he wants across Japan as well. Yeah. Um, he looked pretty good in that match. I really he enjoyed him very that good match. in that match. Yeah, yeah he's so. got the visual pinfall over. Um, John Moxley, which yeah. is pretty impressive, and lifted him up, obviously, which is your downfall. Never yeah, do that. No. Never goes well for people, anyone. It's just cocky. Yeah. Yeah, so th that going forward is awesome. It's, um, he's kind of seen as... Is he in the inner circle now, officially? Is he, is he part of that, that I team? I guess. Is yeah. he just a hired gun for them, or is he actually in the inner circle? a good hired gun. We'll I mean, that. Whatever it is, he looks very impressive, and yeah, looking forward to seeing more. Yeah, and that's that relationship again between uh, AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling kind of being hinted at again. That yes, hopefully that flourishes because it's definitely better when these two can work together. <sighs> super shows, super yeah. shows. You don't need to be against each other, guys. Help each other out. Unite to destroy. Indeed. <laughs> that's weird. Okay, um, yeah, and going in, going in after that as well, um, we've got a bit of news on who's responsible for some of the some of the stellar matches that we saw. Last, personally, last week's show, last week's Dynamite. It's a say, very good show. I want to say it was the best. I'm not going to go full Will Burn yeah, and say it was But yeah, I'd, I'd say, from my personal opinion, I thought it was the best one, best show that I've seen from AEW um, in terms of the weekly show anyway. Yeah. And um, apparently, um, a few of the kind of big names backstage, the big kind of wrestling stars anyway backstage, were responsible, um, or at least had an input into those matches. So Cody was apparently responsible for the kind of the direction and a lot of the creative behind the steel cage match makes Probably sense surprise yeah probably said yeah i want to do a backflip off the top of the cage now no, <laughs> but we started from that and then <laughs> yeah. how do we get backwards yeah and apparently um the uh tnt executives were in the arena as well and they weren't that bothered about the the, the blood at all 
interesting. I, they just they kind of see um, AEW as the underdog right now. It's all according to the um, the Wrestling Observer. Um, they've said that they want to give them as much leeway as possible to kind of give them yeah give them as much chance as possible to be successful. Really set themselves apart from WWE. And then also you've got the tag team battle royal um, that was written by Tony Khan. That's quite so, interesting. Know, really cool. <laughs> Giving him a shot at writing a match. Yeah. So apparently <laughs> he put like the kind of template down. Um, then the Young Bucks obviously helped kind of actually call the match yeah. inside and like let everyone else know what was going on. And nothing went wrong apparently. I bet that was work. such a massive nerdy moment for Tony Khan. Yeah. He loves wrestling. He's just a massive wrestling yeah. fan. That's why he got involved in this in the first place to actually get there and be like, oh, he's, he's like playing with his action figures. Yeah. But it's real life. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's come off. I, I re- that that it was a surprised match, me. I just thought really it's just going to be a cluster and it's just not going to work out. Yeah. But it worked out really well. There's it was a lot good. of good stories told in that match. And then uh, the last uh, kind of big, well, I think Jericho and Dean Malenko were involved in um, creating that back, the post match segment after the Moxley Cobb match that we just mentioned. Yeah. But then uh, Kenny Omega was the mind behind uh, Shane. Shanna and Chris Statlander's match and his own his own match uh, with Hangman uh, yeah. Hangman Page uh, against the Lucha Brothers for the titles so all the kind of feature players of the elite and Jericho as well but yeah. yeah they were all kind of involved massively in making that show you can't successful really as well go wrong when you've got that much talent going into a show like that can you? it just goes to show yeah if you let the minds be free and work yeah. you're going to get some excellent stuff well, we do. wrestlers know how to make wrestling matches who knew, knew? <laughs> jinx uh, anyway uh, back to Smackdown again and more of the weird little glitchy things are going on we've not actually got any news on this I just mm. wanted to talk about it because we've not really spoke about it yet is this um, the weird circle I think thing? it started last week there was just a couple of glitches in like the Elias segment and somewhere else mm. uh, and then this week during the tag team match the uh, New Day and uh, the Usos versus Miz and Morrison mm-hmm. and Dolph Ziggler and uh, Robert Roode sort of glitched again but then we got this like uh, electronic sort of computerized background and then what well, kind of it just looks like the Microsoft Outlook logo yeah it's just a little envelope yeah uh, but they're going all in on these glitches the commentary still aren't talking about it whatsoever so we want to know what you think the glitches are for who could is it, is it someone debuting is it someone someone old coming back with a different character is it the return of Solomon Crow? <laughs> <laughs> For me, it would have been like obviously it's never going to happen because of AEW and everything else. But it would have got I would have instantly thought, oh Jericho, yeah, it's that kind it's, of it's very like Y two Jericho, yeah. like Codebreaker style. Any Sting? Sting with weird emails? I don't know. It's definitely something to do <laughs> with fine. emails. So it's it's, it's an envelope. It's, it is an envelope. So it's email man, big email. Could be repo man. I didn't get enough love. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so my mind was up. I was like, repo man. Anyway, let us know in the comments down below who you think it would be or could be. Yes. Um, next. <laughs> the next. Sorry. Next. Um, next story is all about the Hall of Fame. Um, got a pretty email good email C three. Email C three. Yeah, like EC three, but with emails. If it's not that now, <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit upset. Because they posted a really cool picture as well, Braun Strowman, EC3, and, um, ah, Drake, Dr- no, Drake, Drake Maverick. Yeah. Um, they were all, like, stood there kind of looking like they're in platoon. They look really good. And they were like, if they get a certain amount of retweets, they were going to make a big budget film out of it. And I was just like, retweet, retweet. They look awesome. really good. Um, yeah, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame stuff. Yes, uh, sorry. Pretty good class so far. It we is got? We've got the NWO. We've got yep. Big Dave Batista. Yep. Didn't enjoy the picture they put of Batista on SmackDown because he was wearing his weird short pants thing. And I was like, dude, you literally wrestled last year. Put him like he... Oh. Yeah. Annoyed. Um, but yeah, and then... I'm not sure if I've missed anybody else out in the class so far. Uh, I don't know if there's any officially announced, but there's a bunch of rumours. Like yeah. Jushin Thunder Liger's yeah. rumoured. Uh, British Bulldog. British Bulldog. Did they announce the British Bulldog? I can't remember. I don't, I can't don't think remember they, now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, but then you've got JBL apparently. Yes. So that that might be the other one. But an official announcement on SmackDown was the Bella Twins. The Indeed. Bella Twins, the Bella Army will be so happy. Uh, they are apparently, well, they are officially going to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, they both sat there and they both preggers having a, having a <laughs> chat with Alexa, <laughs> please. Talking about just being twins and being pregnant and yeah, just being happy to be there. And Daniel Bryan came out at the end of the segment as well and it was really sweet and really nice and I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna rip into it too much because I got my heart flooded a little bit when they had like a little family <laughs> thing. I'm not the massive fan of the Bellas, but I was like, oh, it's really nice. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. So there you go, <laughs> Bellas in the Hall of Fame. It's official now. And it's lovely. Yes. Um, anyway, uh, moving on, William Regal's son is now a member of the New Japan Dojo. He is one of their latest young lions and this is kind of exciting because you've got A, William Regal's son, so he, you know, he's gonna like punching people yeah. quite hard probably. Yeah. 
going into the New Japan Dojo, those two things mixed together is just a recipe for brilliance. The young Surely. British lion. Yeah. Just writes itself, really. Can't wait to see what comes out of this. He also looks very much like a young Penny Omega <laughs> with the wow. same kind of permy hair. All right, cool. I like this gen new, because like, we're getting so many kind of new generation, next generation wrestlers coming out now. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just really cool when we're at a point now where we're like, oh, I kind of have lived through your dad's yeah. work. And now it's like, oh, I get to see you go smash yeah. it now. It's cool. I also love that William Regal's son, who obviously has a free pass into the WWE Performance Center yeah. whenever he wants yeah. it, because he's William Regal's son chose to go to the New Japan Dojo. Just because he can't. Well, to me, there's that fear of, like, because I watched the video of The Rock um, turning up to the PC yeah. for um, Simone, like, when like she was training her and everything. It was really sweet, it was really nice, but then equally, you, like, and this is just one of those things you can't help when you are kind of next generation, but you, could, you couldn't help but feel everyone else was kind of there, like, that's your dad, your dad's just giving yeah. you like an easy treatment thing. And I think he might have maybe felt yeah. that. Like, maybe go the it. hard route where he's not going to get any favours in the New Japan nope. Dojo. They're going to treat everyone exactly the same. Exactly and he's, they're going to kick the crap out of him. <sighs> but I guess William Regal probably made it a point to like go out, make it on your own before yeah. you do this. Because you'll be in a better sense when you finally come back. But That's what he did. Um, right, is this our last piece of news? This is our last piece right. of news. A lot of news today. Coincidentally, uh, this is a, a, an MMA UFC, UFC story, and I am all What Culture Combat right now. So oh, yeah, subscribe is... to What Culture Combat on YouTube. Click for it. All of your What Culture E style MMA needs. And videos of me getting beaten up. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. um, so, this story centers around um, not one, but two UFC stars, former UFC stars, uh, training at the PC. Uh, one of them's already appeared, obviously. Cain Velasquez uh, had that kind of big announcement. Big kind of reveal. And he got his ass kicked. No, it was a shoot match. Woo! Yeah, they had an actual fight because th that's what we want in pro wrestling yeah. actual fights. Like, and he got his ass kicked. He did. He did. Well, Debut! I didn't, I didn't realize he hurt his knees, apparently. So really? he, yeah, in, in one of the live shows after that, uh, I think he was scheduled to wrestle with Rey Mysterio. I'm not sure if he actually had the match, but okay. apparently just after that, he announced that he was having a bit of knee trouble. He's, he's had, uh, I think it was. Yeah, knee scope surgery. Uh, Interesting. Yep, so he said that he's feeling better now, he's feeling completely healthy. Uh, and he's back in the PC and he's training and he's expected to return back soon. We're not sure in what capacity, whether he's going to go after Brock Lesnar again, we don't know. Who I mean, knows? maybe night after WrestleMania seems like a good time to come back. Potentially, but... I hope they let him do Hurricanes and things this oh. time, because he was way better in Mexico than he was in the Brock Lesnar match. This is what I'm thinking. So obviously we saw those videos and thought, wow, this guy looks incredible. We're, uh, Maybe he had a bit, like a bit, because he came out with a massive knee brace. Maybe, on. yeah. So, so maybe I, they were thinking, limited from the start. So now if he's, he's he's back fully fit. Interesting. Could have a different game Velasquez. And um, the other person who's been apparently training at the PC, Tito Ortiz, of all people. Um, if you know a lot about Tito Ortiz, he turned up in Impact a couple of years back. Um, UFC absolute kind of one of the like Hall of Fame legends kind of thing. Uh, but he's he's known as being quite charismatic and he's he's not really aged too much. I think he's in his 40s, but he looks like he's in his 30s. He's one of those kind of guys. Uh, he'd do a job. I, I don't think he's kind of well equipped to be bumping around the place left, right and center at his kind of age now. But he definitely, he's, he's a big face in MMA, drawing a lot of maybe MMA fans into wrestling. He's a good crossover star. Uh, I mean, what, I don't know what he'd be, maybe a, maybe a bit of muscle for somebody, maybe he's not going to be a talking piece because he's not exactly known as being the kind of <laughs> the most articulate trash talker in all of MMA, but... They have ways of making these things work. Yeah, just, just, I don't Took know. Took him with Paul Heyman, get rid of Bob Lesnar for a while, Took him with Paul Heyman. <laughs> just have all the big heavyweight UFC stars. Just taking Paul up. Heyman surrounded by all these massive UFC Look at guys. John Jones, Brock Lesnar, Lesnar, Velasquez, and <laughs> T... Oh, oh, that's a stable, wow. <laughs> Legit. There you go. That'd and cool. that is the news. A bit long today because there were so many news stories. But make sure that you subscribe down below, like the video, comment on all of the stories, let me know what you think, let me know who the Smackdown weird little code things are for. Mm. And C3 has to be now. Yeah. And follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at Fill My Chambers. You can follow Gareth. At GMorgan04, I and think. Follow everyone at What Culture at What Culture WWE. And yeah, have a very nice day. Join us later for the SmackDown Review podcast. Ups and downs coming later on, and then a list and things. There's stuff coming. <laughs> Stay tuned. Things. Stay tuned to YouTube for things. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>